Hello, this is C.L. Barber looking at American civil rights. Today we're going to look at the March on Washington, ending with the famous I Have a Dream speech by Martin Luther King. Hopefully, by the end of this presentation, you should be able to understand the aims of the March on Washington, understand the key features and the methods used, and analyse how important it was for the civil rights campaign. This happened just after the Birmingham campaign where due to the use of police dogs and fire hoses, which had been used on protesters at Birmingham, with some as young as six, as well as Martin Luther King's letter from Birmingham jail, civil rights was once more at the forefront of American thought. The media publicity had even led to the involvement of President, and so Martin Luther King and the other civil rights leaders were determined to keep the momentum going in the hope that they would get some more rights and equality for African Americans. The year was 1963, exactly 100 years since Abraham Lincoln had abolished slavery. The civil rights leaders were determined to commemorate the centenary, so Philip Randolph suggested a huge march on Washington. Everybody thought this was a great idea, and Randolph was given close assistance by Baynard Rustin and Cleveland Robinson. Many groups became involved in the organisation, such as the NAACP, which is the National Association for the Advancement of Coloured People, CORE, the Congress of Racial Equality, SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, and the SCLC, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. King was determined that the march should happen, for he knew that many African Americans were starting to get frustrated and annoyed at the lack of progress. He was worried that as a result, some might resort to violence which, which went against his peaceful policy. Therefore, he thought it essential that the campaign keep up its momentum. They informed Washington of the march, and as a result, none of the 3,000 New York policemen were allowed to take leave on the day. A thousand local officers were also called in, in case of violence, and there were also 2,000 National Guardsmen on standby. Worried about violence, Especially after the treatment of African Americans at Birmingham, Kennedy asked the civil rights leaders to call it off. So what did the marchers want? Well, initially, those on the march were promoting economic issues with jobs, as well as their freedom. However, gradually their aims broadened so that it covered the whole civil rights movement. It ended with the demand for the passage of Kennedy's civil rights bill. Bayard Rustin left and Cleveland Robinson Two of the organisers on the March of Washington can be seen in the picture to the right. So what were the key features of the March on Washington? Well, firstly, it exceeded all expectations. They ended up with about 250,000 demonstrators, of whom about 80,000 were white. They had only expected half this amount of people. People came from all over America by plane, train, bus and car, so that they could show their support for the cause by taking part in the march. When senators and congressmen were seen, there were chants of pass the bill, meaning Kennedy's civil rights bill. Another key feature was the speakers and singers. Before the speakers, Bob Dylan sang several songs, one of which was called Only a Pawn in Their Game. He was joined by other protest singers. Not all the speakers were moderate in their approach. John Lewis of the SNCC was forced to amend his speech, but even so, the one he delivered was very powerful. We are all tired of being beaten by policemen. We are tired of seeing our people locked up in jail over and over again. We march out today for jobs and freedom, but we have nothing to be proud of, for hundreds and thousands of our brothers are not here for they have no money for their transportation, for they are receiving starvation wages or no wages at all. We must have legislation that will protect the Mississippi sharecroppers who have been forced to leave their homes because they dared to exercise their right to register to vote. And finally, King was the last speaker and his speech has gone down in history in the struggle for civil rights. He used his speaking skills and included references which appealed to all sections of society. He quoted the American Declaration of Independence and looked to a future where he saw racial equality, 
in the United States of America. I have a dream that one day right there in Alabama, little black boys and little black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. We will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters of righteousness, like a mighty stream. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the colour of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at a table of brotherhood. When we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Although there were some detractors, for example Malcolm X called it the farce on Washington, the march on Washington was held as a great success. It was televised across the USA and did much for the civil rights movement. It brought together different sections of US society and put further pressure on Kennedy to move forwards on civil rights. After the march, King and the other leaders met President Kennedy to discuss the civil rights le legislation. Kennedy was keen to let them know that he was committed to the civil rights cause and his bill. However, they were aware that there were many Republican Party politicians who still opposed any changes to civil rights. No opposition politician in the Senate changed his mind about Kennedy's civil rights bill. So if we're looking at revision, we need to think about the reasons for the march. What did they want to achieve? What were the key features, the number of people and the methods used? What were the successes, the president's support, white and African American support and working together, the media attention? And what were the limitations? The Republican opposition meant no bill was passed by President Kennedy. In this paper there are source work questions. So you might get a question such as, how useful are sources ENF for an inquiry into the Washington March? Explain your answer using sources ENF and your knowledge of the historical context. Remember to say what they include, but also what you can't tell from the sources. Firstly, you will look at source E, and you'll look at the content, which is the content, language, contextual knowledge, typicality and selectivity, and then you'll look at the nature, origin and purpose. Then you'll do the same for F, the content, language, contextual knowledge, and then the nature, origin and purpose. This is C.L. Barber, 1977. Thank you very much for watching and for listening. Please subscribe for more YouTube clips on civil rights, Henry VIII, crime and punishment and my book Keeper of the Keystone.